Have you ever wondered if you can feel better in just a few minutes a day by doing some very easy things that'll make an improvement in your life? That's what we'll talk about today. Mental health and mental balance is critical to leading a healthy life. Mariel Hemingway. Today, we'll be talking about the book, Feel Better in Five, Your Daily Plan to Feel Great for Life by Dr. Ragan Chatterjee. The first point in his book is he talks about having a health snack. And it's not the snack you're thinking of, although the snack you're thinking of sounds pretty good too. This is about taking a small little action that will either make you feel better mentally, make you feel better physically, or do something so you feel better in your heart. Not health-wise heart, but your emotional being. You want to be able to do something that's a quick hit that will help you be better for a long period of time. The analogy works really well. Think about if you're going to do something very physical, like go for a run. A quick snack would help you go for a run better, maybe run a little bit longer or more energetically. And this concept of the health snack is exactly the same. Is there something that you can do very quickly that would improve you in such a way that you could do better? And primarily this book is made up of a ton of recipes of these health snacks. He tries to help you fix everything from anger, frustration, depression, to back pain and other physical ailments, but in these very quick ways. Are there things that are tiny and instrumental in making you feel better, more energized, and more willing to go do the things that you know you have to do during the day? His initial discussion is, why do we fail at improving our health? And he says it's because we just can't snap our fingers and change our lives. We can't make all the things that we want to do happen that quickly. And even if we go to our doctor and explain what's going wrong with our health, some symptom we're having, some problem we're having, we never got to that problem in a day. And we're not going to fix it in a day either. And that tends to be our natural reaction. We're going to crash diet. We're going to eat nothing bad. We're going to live an entirely healthy life and exercise every day and walk our dog six times a day and everything will be fine. But when we do that, that kind of a change is easy to fail and easy to go away after a short time. And again, because you didn't get into your health problems in one day, you're not going to get out of them in one day either. And that's where I think his system is analogous to all of life. Pretty much all problems you have in your life, you didn't get to in a day and you're not going to get out of in a day either. And here's this really important other point. Quote, why do we fail? Because we're focusing on the destination rather than the journey but that's not how we get anywhere. But when you look at the journey, you're taking small steps. You're doing daily decisions that make everything better. If you are going to fly to Italy on your favorite trip, do you get there by just ignoring the process it takes to get there? Buying the plane tickets, packing for the trip, getting to the airport, getting on the plane, arranging all the places you're going to stay? If you just focus on the destination and not the process along the way, you're not going to get very far and the destination is not going to look like what you hoped it would. And that really life is not about these big things that we imagine it to be, about those great triumphs, the big crashes. It's about the things we do in habits every day. And he says things like brushing your teeth, paying your bills, closing your front door, making a cup of coffee, all those little things we can do without even thinking about them because they became habits in our lives. But can we make other things solid habits so that we can do them automatically and rely on them like we do with other habits that we have long made into daily routines? And if we fail, it's primarily because we made it too hard. If we can make everything more simple, then we'll get the success we're trying to get. He also invokes the book that we talked about in episode 27, Tiny Habits by B.J. Fogg, where you make everything so tiny you can't possibly fail. And he talks a little bit about that book. He liked it. I liked it. It's a really successful way of going about making habits stick. And he talks about how these habits start to compound down each other. Once you start successfully getting one habit under your belt, the other ones become easier. For example, as soon as you start getting your diet into better shape, you suddenly start feeling like you have more energy. 
And now you can exercise more. You can get out more and just do simple walks. But everything starts working towards the very things you're trying to do. All you have to do is start. He talks about six tips he has for getting a habit in place. And the first one is what we've been talking about. You start easy. And if it's not taking off, start even easier. The second is to tie habits to already existing habits. Like when you brush your teeth, you also floss your teeth. That's a typical stacking that we already do in real life. So if you're considering doing some habit stacking, could you do five push-ups whenever you get up and get a drink from the refrigerator? Could you consider making your bed? Could you clean up a portion of your kitchen every time you're watching your dinner cook? Could you do a quick five minutes of exercise whenever you get up first thing in the morning and listen to your favorite podcast at the same time? But pick something that you already do today and see if you can put another habit right on top of it. The third thing he talks about is respecting your natural rhythm. When do you feel motivated to do things and when don't you? Typically, people feel very motivated in the mornings. They get up and it's easier for them to exercise. They have a quick snack get on the exercise device or whatever they're going to do, go for a run. And then as it gets later towards evening, they're winding down and it becomes harder to do. For me, that's almost exactly the opposite. I'm not that motivated in the morning other than to do things like paperwork and busy work that I need to get done. But I find as the day goes on, I'm more of an afternoon person. I'm pretty motivated in the afternoon. And so that's a good time for me to get things done. Whatever your natural rhythm is, respect it so that you're successful with whatever you're doing based on when you feel it's the best time to do it. Then the next step, number four, is to design your environment. And primarily that means set up everything so that you're successful. If it's your kitchen, you have all the healthy foods and snacks right there in a visible place so that you can get them when you need to get them. Everything that you should be doing is easy to do. The things that you shouldn't be doing, maybe you have to have snacks in the house because you have kids in the house. Those things are hidden, farther away, harder to get. And you think about those times where people talked about taking their credit cards and putting them in a block of ice in their freezer so they can get to their credit cards. They're not canceling them, but it's really hard to do. See what you can do in your environment to make everything work your way. Is that setting out your exercise clothes? Is it putting the healthy snacks in front of you? Is it taking an exercise that you should do just in your own living room and setting it up so that you can just get up in the morning and do it? All those things that you're trying to do in order to make your life successful should be easy to do. And the last step he talks about is positive self-talk. And I get it. It sounds silly to sit there and go, yay, Jill, you just did it. I don't like talking to myself because it's sort of weird. But it really does work when you pat yourself on the back. If you say, I did it, I'm now a person who doesn't have to eat chocolate bars anymore. When you just say something that reinforces it for you, it actually makes it easier for you to do in the future. And you shouldn't use words like should, need to, have to, he says. You'll want to say, I'll feel more energetic if I eat this healthy lunch. I will feel better in the morning if I go to bed now. And then when you wake up in the morning, I feel good this morning because I went to bed earlier and I got more sleep. So make sure that when you talk to yourself, it's in this positive language of setting yourself up for success and then patting yourself on the back for doing that. And he says it will feel silly at first. Just keep doing it. The more you do it, the better it'll start working for you. I just started having salad for lunch. I mean, who wants to have salad for lunch, right? You want to have fun things for lunch. Every day when I eat that salad for lunch, I pat myself on the back. You did it. You had a salad for another day and it was pretty good. Trying to keep in my mind that someday when I get to lunch and I don't feel like eating my salad, remembering all the good that came from eating the salad on the previous days. And then the last step is to celebrate success. Of course, you want to celebrate in such a way that it's not wrecking your new habit. If you're trying to lose weight, you're not going to get a cake. If you're trying to get more exercise, you don't get to skip a day. You want to make sure that whatever celebration you're doing makes sense, supports what you're trying to get done, and feels good so that you like what you're doing and you feel good about it. I think the best way 
in order to support yourself with celebrations is to have some way of randomizing it. Long time ago, there were a lot of studies that were talking about the bell ringing and the dog, right? Pavlov's dog. And they found it works okay, right? You ring a bell, the dog salivates. But what they also found is that what works even better than conditioning is random rewards. So instead of ring a bell, give a dog a treat, get an exercise done, give yourself a treat. If you do it every day, it actually is less effective than if you get a random treat. And sometimes that's hard. Maybe if you have a spouse or kids who can help you out with your random treat, they can help be that person for you. But another way that you could do it is to have some sort of a drawing maybe for a prize. And some days there's some mundane prizes in there and some days there's some exciting prizes in there. But the random reward is more impactful for you every day. And he talks about just putting beans in a jar so that you have a jar sitting out. And every time you do the thing that you're trying to do, maybe I'm trying to eat salads every day and I do it, I just take a bean, a marble, something that I can drop into a jar and I do it every day. And the reward is just seeing how full that jar is getting. Maybe I have a big reward when that jar gets filled. So that's another technique he mentions about having a celebration. He says the key to the success of his program in having these habits work is that you don't want to bend your life around habits. That's a sure sign that you're going to fail. If you have to change everything, you're not going to do it. But if you can change your new plans to bend around your life, that's where it's going to succeed. And when he talks about these health snacks and having three different kinds, he's not necessarily talking about snack snacks. He's talking about three healthy things that will make you feel better, more energized. And they might be a healthy snack. They could also be a yoga stretch. It could be a quick walk. It could be doing something that makes you mentally more prepared for life, physically more prepared for life, and then something that makes your heart feel better. So those are three quick actions you can take that will make one of those three actions stronger. And he has a bunch of recipes in there for anger and anxiety and when you're feeling frustrated. And so then you can just go in and pick what you're feeling at that moment and take action on it. It even has some physical things like back pain. What are three health snacks that you can take to help your back pain? And he says to remember that you only have to choose one. So like I said, this book has a lot of really good ideas about how to deal with physical pain, emotional pain, or something that's going on with your thought processes. He has recipes in place to help you with that. You also can come up with your own and his book's a good reference. But what do you do when you're feeling particularly angry? What do you do when you're feeling particularly sluggish? Or what kind of thing do you have to do in order to get your body from feeling less crunchy after you've been sitting for a while? He's another one who likes to write everything down on paper. A lot of people feel that paper is more meaningful to our brains, that we get a better process in place when we actually write it with a paper and a pen. For me, I don't find that to be true. I can't read my own handwriting. I find writing things down frustrating. But I would say that most people probably do better by actually writing something down. He says that you can keep it, you know, whatever is in your head at that moment, whatever you're struggling with that moment, or you can burn it in a pyre, which I like. I like to stick anything in my fire pit that I could burn successfully. But You have to decide whether you want to keep these things or burn them, but he suggests that if you're going to burn something, make sure it's safe. So then he has some exercises to set yourself up for a very good day. And the first thing he does with his piece of paper is he writes down what he's not feeling good about today. Is something worrying him? Is he feeling stressed about something? And then the second step is to write one thing that could help that item be better? What step could he take in order to make whatever is stressing him out go more easily for him? Then he wants you to give a reason why the thing you're worried about or stressed about isn't going to be nearly as tough or hard to defeat as you thought it would. Fourth, write down a very specific way that you know you're going to beat it. So if you have a very tough meeting, 
tell yourself, I've had meetings like this before. It's going to be fine. I've had customers who are angry or I've had a situation where I've had to deal with an angry relative. I've done it before. I'm going to do it again. Or whatever method you have for knowing that you're going to overcome this bad thing. And then the last step is to look at one positive thing about the situation that is stressing you out or making you have anxiety. If you're asking for a raise, maybe you'll get a raise. If you're dealing with someone in your family that you're having a stressful relationship with, maybe you'll walk away with a good relationship with them. So this book has a lot of good health tips in it. It's a very quick and easy book to read. A lot of the points are bulleted and they're all very practical. And I like the book overall, but I also thought that some of his wisdom goes well beyond the health world and helps us go after some of those big challenges we have in our lives with that same pattern. It's good advice for whatever it is you're going to take on. So my challenge to you is see if you can come up either through his book or on your own, three small health snacks that will help you in a lot of situations. They could be a short cluster of five exercises. They could be a way that you instantaneously de-stress from your life. Or is it something that just warms your heart? Looking at some photos that you really enjoy seeing that can just help your heart feel better. And now our fun entertainment advice of the week comes from Parks and Recreation with Leslie Nope. Although I've not worked with you professionally, as a private citizen, I have personally patronized each and every one of your establishments. Mm, I've never seen you buy a salad at Sue's Salad. It's because I don't hate myself, Tanya. I'm sorry. I know I should be chasing your vote, but I stand behind my decision to avoid salad and other disgusting things. And I think I have a lot of support in the community for that. There's a lot of things that you can do for your health and that concept of having the healthy snack, whether it's food or something else. But the reality is, salads can be stupid. I know, I'm eating them every day. But they're probably worthwhile since they're so healthy and everything like that. All right, everyone, thanks so much. I would appreciate it if you could tell a friend about this podcast or leave a review. And as always, you can visit smallstepspod.com or email me at jill at smallstepspod if you have any problems. I got an email from a fellow out there who told me one of my links wasn't working correctly in my podcast feed. And I fixed it up and I appreciate the feedback. Please let me know your feedback because I'd love to help whatever way I can. 